Before the start of the session, let us all chant Namo Tassa together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arehato Samha Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arehato Samha Sambodnas Namotas Bagaveto Arehato Samha Sambodnas All right, everyone. Right, so today we are starting. Um, you know, <laughs> with auspicious day, auspicious time, we are starting the Avidam Matta Sangraha today, the first chapter. So let's get right to it. Um, lovely. Is this big enough, everyone? Would you like me to make it bigger? Oh, I got it. Right. Uh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> right. Chapter one Compendium of Consciousness, Chitta Sangaha Vibhaga. So, as any book written back in the day, and even today, if it is related to the Dhamma, it would start with a annotation of veneration and worship of the teacher. So this is what we come across first. Samma sambuddha matulang sasadhamma ganuttamang abhivadiya basis sang abhidam matta sangaha. Now here, here, right, let's go through it first. Having respectfully saluted the fully enlightened one, the peerless one, along with the sublime teaching and the noble order, I will speak the manual of Dhamma, a compendium of things contained in the Abhidhamma, right? In the Abhidhamma. Um, in the Abhidhamma. Now, the Abhidhamma, the Sangraha, really... Is this verse, meaning the original Abhidhammata Sangraha, is only this verse? Do you understand? Right? So, Samma in the Pali, the original Abhidhamma, Abhidhammata Sangraha that was written, right, is only this verse. What we find afterwards is all commentary on these words. Do you understand? Right? So now in Burma, when we study the Abhidhammata Sangha, the first thing that is asked of us by our teachers is to memorize these verses. Now in even next, you find, we will come across ah, here. Tata vutta abhidhammata chatuddha paramatta to chittan cheta sikhan rupan nibbhanam iti sabada. That is the Abhidhammata Sangaha original verse. Is that understood, everyone? Right? So, for a, for a well-versed teacher, this verse is enough to conduct or speak on all of the things that are mentioned in the... So, all of this is commentary on that verse. Is that clear? Right? So now you understand what exactly is the Abhidhammata Sangraha. Right? So this is Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi's book, which is an uh, edition of, Achar, uh, of Acharya Anruddha's Abhidhammata Sangraha. This book, Venerable Silananda, who is a Burmese monk, was initially the monk who, um, who was initially the monk who commented on the book, which became famous. Right, and then Bhikkhu Bodhi took it on as a project. I think most of you might have that. I'm looking for a copy if I have it on my bookshelf May, of that old Narda Theros Abhidhammata Sangaha. Uh, 
may that was then sort of written narada theory wrote it with venerable silanand who now passed away he was a burmese monk who lived in the uk right a very much celebrated monk and then venerable bikbodi took on and expanded on the basic narada theros and venerable silanand's book right which is what we are now studying having respectfully saluted abhivadiya kinami machini abhivadiya it is established practice in the buddhist tradition for expositors of the dhamma to be to begin the expositions with a verse of homage to the triple gem the buddha dhamma and the sangha the ultimate refuge for all who seek the undistorted comprehension of actuality thus following this custom with deep devotion the author acharya anuruddha opens his treatises with a verse of praise in which he expresses his veneration for the triple gem a thought of veneration directed towards a worthy object is a wholesome karma that generates merit in the mental continuum of the person who gives rise to such a thought right am i reading too fast anyone am i okay if i'm going too fast please send send me a message also right when this veneration is directed towards the most worthy objects of homage the triple gem the merit generated is vast and powerful such merit accumulated in the mind has the capacity to ward off obstructions to the fulfillment of one's virtuous undertaking and to support their successful completion moreover for a follower of the buddha the writing of a book on the dhamma is a valuable opportunity to develop the perfection of wisdom panya parami therefore when beginning his work the author expresses with blissful words of praise his joy at gaining such an opportunity samma sambuddha that is out of the verse now this is the commentary right the fully enlightened one the buddha call is called the fully enlightened one because he is the one who has fully understood by himself the ultimate nature of all phenomena both in their particular and universal character sammuti and paramatta the term implies the direct knowledge of all realities gained without help from a teacher samma sambuddha right the buddha is called is also called the peerless one atula because his qualities and attributes cannot be matched by any other being though all arahants possess the distinguished qualities of morality concentration and wisdom sufficient to result in liberation none possess the innumerable and immeasurable virtues which a supreme buddha is fully endowed the 10 tathagata's powers of knowledge madhyamika nikaya 12 the four grounds of self confidence the attainment of great compassion and the unobstructed knowledge of omniscience hence hence the buddha is without a peer among all sentient beings as it is said there is one person bikkhus who is unique without a peer without counterpart incomparable unequaled matchless unrivaled the best of humans here this without a peer some might misunderstand here the word without a peer comes because 
only the Tathagathas, even uh, amongst Arahans, um, eliminate Vasana. Vasana, is that clear, everyone? You know the meaning of Vasana? To those of you who do not know the meaning of Vasana, Vasana is not the Sri Lankan word Vasana, right? <laughs> May Vasana and Anuse. Now we know that Arahans get rid of latent tendencies, Anuse, right? All of them. However, Vasana is not really an Anuse, but a Vasana is a result of our infinite life cycles that we've spent in Sansara, which has gone into now habit. Right. So even those habits, which are not really born of Kusala or Akusala uh, mind in the present, even those habits have been sort of removed by the Tathagata because of his long time of practice, thus giving him this title of without, which the Arahans cannot boast of. Is that clear, everyone? Right. The sublime teaching, Saddhamma, the teaching of Dhamma signifies the three aspects of study, Pariyapti. Uh, three aspects of, of study, Pariyapti, practice, Patipatti, and realization, Pativeda. Study is a study of the Triptaka, the scriptures, which record the teachings of the Buddha, comprising the three collections of the Vinaya, the Sutras, and the Abhidhamma. Practice is a threefold training in virtue, concentration, and wisdom. Sila, Samadhi, Prakna. Realization is a penetration of the supramundane parts and the attainment of the noble fruits. Magapala. Right? That is, Magapala is the Pativeda. Each of these is the foundation for the next. Since study provides the guidelines to practice and practice brings the breakthrough to realization, the teaching is called sublime in the sense of true and good because when it is applied in accordance with the Buddha's instructions, it definitely leads, definitely leads to enlightenment, Nibbana. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> the supreme truth and the highest good. And the noble order, Ganuttama. Right? Now I'm just skimming through this because it is in the next part that we actually start the Chitta chapter. Okay, so this is just reading material. Right? But if you do have any questions, anyone, do unmute yourself and ask. The word Gana meaning company or group is used here as a synonym of the Sangha, the community or order. There are two kinds of Sangha, the conventional Sangha, Sammuti Sangha, and the order of bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, fully ordained monks and nuns. And the Sangha of the noble ones, Arya Sangha, referred to in the verse of homage, as the noble order, Arya Sangha. The noble order is the noble or holy community of the accomplished followers of the Buddha. That is, the four parts of persons who have arrived at the plains of the noble ones, distinguished as eightfold according to whether they have reached path they have reached the paths of fruits of stream entry, one century, non-returning, and arahanship. Abhivadiya Basissa, Abhidhammata Sangha. I will speak the manual of Abhidhamma. The title of the work Abhidhammata Sangha literally means a compendium of things obtained in the Abhidhamma, that is, in the Buddha's special or distinguished teaching, Dhamma, handed down in the Abhidhamma Pitaka, 
the author's statement, I will speak, reminds us that our text is meant to be recited and learned by heart so that it will be always, it will always be available to us as an instrument for analyzing reality, right? For analyzing reality. Now we start. The fourfold ultimate reality. Chatuddha Paramatta, the second verse of, of the Abhidhammata Sangaha. Tata Buddha Abhidhammata Chatuddha Buddha Matan Cheta Sikhan Rupang Nibbhanang Iti Sabbada. Right? Tata Buddha Abhidhammata. Within the Abhidhamma, Chatuddha Paramatta, there are four ultimate realities. Chittam Cheta Sikhan Rupang Nibbhanang Iti Sabbada makes whole, right? The things contained in the Abhidhamma spoken of therein are altogether fourfold. From the standpoint of ultimate reality, consciousness, mental factors, matter, and Nibbhana, right? And Nibbhana. <clears throat> From the standpoint of ultimate reality. Now, before I do continue on to this point, right, which is really the entrance into the chitta, and we are starting the chitta now, I must say, now, as we have a very mixed community here, some of you who have, uh, who are seasoned practitioners, some of you who are inspired and, and live to learn and practice the Dhamma, some of you who might be um, somewhat, somewhat curious, but not totally convinced of the essential nature of the Abhidhamma for the practice, right? Now, and some of you who have studied the sutras extensively, and some of you have already studied the Abhidhamma with me a couple of times, right? At this point in time, as we enter into this study, it is important to note the sutras has a scope through which it works, right? The mechanisms of the sutras, there is a mechanism of the sutras, the way that it approaches subjects, the way that it is written, the way that it is formulated, right? In the Pali, when we look at the Pali, differences between the sutra original texts in Pali with the Vyakarana and the Vyanjanas, with the Kachainas and the Moggallanas. Kachaina and Moggallana is not the two disciples. It's the two Pali uh, study, study guides, right? Kachaina and Moggallana, the ancient Pali study guides. What we see is there is clearly a difference between the way Dhamma is approached in the sutras and the way Dhamma is approached in the Abhidhamma. Please note this, right? Please take it to note, right? Now, honestly, there are, there are certain parts in the Abhidhamma and the sutras where question marks arise. There are certain parts. And when there are those certain parts, I will remind myself to tell you that this part, there is, there is a, there's a thing between the sutras and Abhidhamma. But in this chapter, in this chapter, there is no such thing, right? There are no discrepancies between the sutras and the Abhidhamma in this chapter, which is amazing because it's easy for us to grasp, grasp, grasp. However, through the sutras that you have gone through, if you, in any chance, you know, you do think, oh, but the sutras say something like this. Go down to see what and how the sutra is approaching the subject. It is not that the sutras are saying something entirely different, but this, the parase, the parase, the scope that the sutras are going to, and the parase, the scope that the Abhidhamma is going to, is two very different things, right? Is two very different things. Now, example, 
right? I will explain, we are going to go into it, but I want to just give this example before we go ahead. Now, let me think of an example. <laughs> example, right? Let us say, um, let's take a wise man. By the sentence, a wise man or a foolish man, right? A stubborn man, whatever, right? Something man, right? Now, in the, in the Abhidhamma, right? When we break these two apart, the wisdom attribute, if now we are talking, let's take the example of wise man, okay? Let's look at a, a wise monk, for example, let us say, Hari, then Apigamu, a very learned monk like that, and we call him a wise monk, right? Now, in the Abhidhamma, the man is a Samuti, right? The man is a Samuti. The wisdom attribute is taken as a paramatta. In the sutras, wisdom and the man are both samuti. Then Mukaddabi Prashni, what is this now? <laughs> Isn't it? Neither. Right? Then you would think, okay, what is this? Remember. Chatuddha paramattato chittam chetasikan rupan nibbhana. Let's forget nibbhana. Right? Chittam chetasikan rupam. A man, now we are talking about the Abhidhamma here. A man is made out of rupas. Should the rupa, one rupa be different, that man would be a woman. Is that so? Is that right? Right? Would the rupas not have matured that man would be a child? Right? Should the rupas be even more immature or, or young, that man would be an infant. That man broken down can be broken down, hence samuti. Wise. Nangapi, we are taking the example of a wise monk who knows his stuff. Relating to that wisdom, that wisdom attribute, in the Abhidhamma, it is taken as the wisdom, Panya Chetasika. Hence, the Pragna that is depicted by that learned monk in that case and scenario is known as a Paramatta there. The wisdom, not the wisdom in its whole, that wisdom Chetasika which allows the monk to be a wise monk. Do you get what I mean? The wisdom, Chetasika. That, then that wise, the wisdom that we are attributing to. This person knows the Dhamma so profoundly well. That is seen as the wisdom, Chetasika. Hence, Paramatta. Sutra Anuva, me siyallam samuti. The wise man is samuti. Why? Because they are looking at her. In the sutras, we are looking at a general picture there, right? A general picture where it is just a man who is wise. In the Abhidhamma, we are looking at the constitu constituents of that phenomena which are breakable further. Otogota, so the man is breakable, hence Samuti, wisdom is a chet sikha, hence ultimate. Do you understand? Right? Hence, where this, this, this disparity might be seen when we question, okay, what is the scope to it, or the depth to which it is really speaking about, the depth to which it speaks about? Then you realize the depth of the sutras, not to say that the sutras are weak, and no way, no way. It is only on the garbs of, it is only regarding, it is only regarding the fact of the mechanism of Abhidhamma, the mechanism of the soul, it is two different mechanisms. Is that clear? Right? Even the Pali, 
how the Abhidhamma is written, the Pali, the Pali language is different to the Sutra language. Right? Why? Because the mechanisms are different. It is like, for example, if we are talking to one another colloquially, right, just conventionally speaking, we would speak in a very different manner. But if you are, let us say, in an academic conference or something of that sort, then the language is different, isn't it? We can see this very clearly down to the bone when we analyze the original Pali. Now, let us go ahead. From the standpoint of ultimate reality, Paramattato, according to the Abhidhamma philosophy, there are two kinds of realities, conventional Samuti and ultimate Paramattha. Conventional realities are reference of the ordinary conceptual thought, Praknyapti or Panyapti. And conventional modes of expression, Vohar, they include such entities as living beings, persons, men, women, animals, and the apparently stable persisting objects that constitute our unanalyzed picture of the world. So everything. So everything. Is that clear, everyone? Right? If you have any questions, if you do not agree on a certain thing, please do not keep quiet. Do pin a message on the chat or unmute yourself and ask your question. But ask the question. Right? Ask the question. The Abhidhamma philosophy maintains that these notions do not possess ultimate validity. Correct, Nick? Right? Living beings, person, men, women, may walk samuti. Right? They do not have an ultimate validity. For the objects which they signify do not exist in their own right. Correct, no? Right? The weather is pleasant. The next moment it's going to be so hot. The weather is it's going to become cloudy, so cloudy that we all start sweating. Right? Now, my comfort is now being challenged by the weather. How many things challenge our comfort day in and day out? The words of other people, sightings, the smells, the tastes. Isn't it? Right? Hence, their own right, they do not possess, they do not possess ultimate validity for the objects which they signify do not exist in their own right as irreducible realities. Is that clear? Right? Their mode of being is conceptual not actual. Their mode of being is conceptual, not actual. They are products of mental constructs, parikappana, parikappana, not realities existing by reason of their own nature, sabhava lakkana, or in Singhala, swabhava lakkana. Right? Is that clear? They do not have a swabhava lakkana. What does not have a swabhava lakkana? These praknyaptis. Praknyaptis as a result of this conventional sammuti. Such a conceptual thought, praknyapti, and their modes of expression, vohara. All of this will come together. Right? Ultimate realities in contrast are things that exist by reason of their own intrinsic nature, swab, sabhava. Right? Sabhava. Swabhava Right? These are the dhammas, the final, irreducible components of existence. The ultimate entities which result from a correctly performed analysis of experience. Such existence admit of no further reduction. 
Patavi o apo o tejo o vayo, you cannot go beyond it. Right? That's the ultimate force that you see. However, what do we then do afterwards is a question for a later time. Right? <laughs> but are themselves the final terms of analysis. The true constituents of the complex manifold of experience. Hence, the word paramatta is applied to them. Parama atta paramatta. Parama atta paramatta. Parama ultimate. Atta is existence. That ultimate way of the state of things, right? Parama, end of the spectrum. End of the spectrum. Do you understand? Is that clear, right? Which is derived from parama, ultimate, highest, final, and other reality, right? Reality. Any questions up to here? Yes, Malkanti. Bhante, you said uh, the ultimate reality only Apo is one, Tejo, Vayo, Hatavi. Are we taking all four together or just one at a time? Uh, depends. Depends. Then, then um, depends. Depends on which or which level of experience mm -hmm. we are talking about, Malkanti. Right now, if we are talking about something like Nama Rupa Paricheda, right, where we uh, where we separate Nama Rupa and we see Nama Rupa as it is, then we can take the isolated. We can go down to see the separate incidents of Pataviya Potejo Vayu within a Kalapa. Right. Yes. Then the Kalapa also disappears. Kalapa also disappears, and the raw Pataviya Potejo Vayu is seen. When the raw patavi apo tejo is seen, then you can focus your attention on patavi o apo o tejo o vayo. Right? This uh, we hear uh, even before the time of the Buddha, this used to be done with regards to the powers. Right? Where, where you get fixated on a certain sort of solidity or emotion. This is how the miraculous powers, the abhinyana is developed on. Right, the foundations of the uh, Abhinyana. Now, for example, if we are to take me, if we are to take, no, I must correct myself there. If we are to take, let us say, walking in the sky, right? Walking in the sky or walking on water, that is the Patavi Datu, right? However, I must, this is my correction of what I just said. The yogis, they don't go to the ultimate reality of Rupa, but they contemplate and manifest hardness. That is bad. Did, did I correct myself properly? Now, in the Rupa, when we go into Rupa, Isarama, Nama Rupa Paricheda Jnana, the first one is the Nama Rupa Paricheda Jnana, which is the first Vipassana knowledge, you can see the Nama Rupa. Then, Pacha Pariga, right? Yeah. Pacha Pariga, you see the causal nature between the Pataviya Potejo Vayu, yeah. right? Arising and passing, mutually supporting one another, yeah. right? Then when you go further, you see the different manifestations of the Pataviya Potejo Vayu, how the Kalapas are made, right? How Avidya plays a role in that Kalapa manifestation. 
right? How these rupas change, change, change. You see the nature of how those derived rupas, meaning the rupas that are derived of patavi apotejo vayo adya, the hetu pala between that, breaking down the self, right? So really Malkanti depends on what level, but in the Abhidham, we go into each and every different lakana characteristics, padattana, all of that, pachupattana, right? The causal effects of each and every attribute of the 28 rupas, the 89 chittas, the 52 chetasikas, right? So we'll hold on to that question. It's not answered yet, Malkanti, but it will become even more clear in, in a bit as we progress. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. The ultimate realities are characterized not only from an ontological angle as ultimate existence, but also from an epi epistemological angle. Sorry, my pronunciation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> angle. As the ultimate objects of right knowledge. Of right knowledge, meaning Samuti Satcha is taken as object by what? For what meditation is Samuti Satcha taken as object? Damyanti Kiyan Balan. You have to unmute yourself, Damyanti. It's with the, with the Samadhi. When you're getting in the um, oh, Samatha Samadhi. You... Annahari, Samatha. So Samatha takes Samuti as object. Paramatta takes, sorry, Vipassana takes Paramatta as object. Is that clear, everyone? Is that clear? Samuti in Vidarshanavakaranda Beha. You cannot do Vipassana with the Samuti, with the conventional truth. You can only do Samatha. For Vidarshana, for Vipassana, we take ultimate realities as object, right? Ultimate realities as object. As one extracts oil from the sesame seed, so no one can extract the ultimate realities. So one, sorry. So one can extract ultimate realities from conventional realities, right? Now that is in a position some of you might be able to relate with the Vidarshana Jnanas, right? With the Vida, when you finish your Samatha Samadhi and go on to the Vidarsh, Vidarshana Jnanas, the Vipassana Jnanas, we realize in our meditation, we start seeing the different Dhatus, the elements. These Dhatus initially start from where? Samutiya ki neda, Tadagatiya, right? Uh, thada, again, thada, api, um, at that initial stage, api thada ikila kienama. E te thada bhavya tattaramara. Sorry, let me switch to English. We say there's a certain hardness initially, even in the Dhatuman Sikhara, only to realize as we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, right? We realize the initial hardness that I saw and how I related to it. And the hardness that I am now seeing at a paramatta level is different, isn't it? Right? You realize that that initial hardness, that, that gross hardness that you might have felt around your shoulders or uh, upon the touch of your palms against one another or as you are sitting cross-legged, that hardness that you felt was at a samuti level. And then when you go to see the Patavi Apo Tejo Vayu in Namarupa Pariche, the Jnana, in the first Vipassana knowledge, you realize what the difference between that Samuti and that Paramatta is, isn't it? Experientially, mm. isn't it? Right? Dhammana Namitana, right? That is why when we say it is so important, everyone, as we are reading through this, don't become that person who is held on to the conventional language which is used. Now, we don't have any other option, right? We must communicate. 
But we realize some of our Vipassana experiences, it is so difficult to put it into words. Right? Almost, almost like it no word really does enough justice to that intimate and very real experience that we are having. Right? So when we are saying, for example, hardness, don't cling on to that word. Don't cling on to that word. Because remember, these are all vohara samuti. Is that clear? These are vohara, only for communication. But let us go deeper, right? What is it saying? As one extract oil from the sesame seed, so one can extract the ultimate realities from conventional realities. For example, being a man, a woman, Concepts suggesting that the things they signify possess irreducible ultimate unity. However, when we wisely investigate these things with the analytical with the with the analytical tools of Abhidhamma, we find that they do not possess the ultimacy implied by the concept, but only a conventional reality as an assemblage of impermanent factors. Meaning, the grossness. Are tadagati? Right? Tadagati. Initially, that, that hardness was, a, was, not, was not ultimate. It was a concept on its own. We were not so developed to let go of that. To see the finest nature of Patavi. Of Patavi. But because I clung on to, ah, this is Patavi, this is Patavi, this is Patavi. I didn't go beyond that gross hardness. But we realize as we do dwell deeper, we realize that that hardness is not comparable to that ultimate hardness. Impermanent, made up of, in, that gross hardness was made up of impermanent factors, samutiya. Samuti would mean that they are made up of impermanent factors of mental and physical processes, mental and physical processes. Thus, by examining the conventional realities with wisdom, we eventually arrive at the objective actualities which lie behind our conceptual constructs. It is these objective actualities, the Dhammas, which maintain their intrinsic natures independently of one's mind, of the mind's constructive functions that form ultimate realities of Abhidhamma. Is that clear? Not so much. Right? Again, the concepts through the Samutis, we arrive at objective actualities. These objective actualities are known by the word the Dhammas or a Dharma which maintain the intrinsic natures Independently. Again, Swabhava Lakkane. Again, I want to say Right? Swabhava Lakkane. Of the mind's constructive functions. Mind's constructive function. What is that? What is that? The mind's con constructive function. Can you say, Api metana me sankara hadha hadhana metana jeevat venni. Me sankara hadhana gati again me katakarani. The mind works or thrives on making, fueling formations, what we know as Sankara. These Sankaras are created by the mind. Right? The mind. The mind puts an idea together. The mind puts an idea together. Hence, even at this moment, as we are approaching these ultimate realities, it is important to have that openness of mind to also understand the mind's game, the mind's game that it so plays, you know, 
වෙන අදාළ වෙන විදියට ගැලපෙන විදියට අපි ඒක හදාගන්නවා චිත්තයක් කියන්නේ මේක it's always important to have that openness so that we can see this through our meditation is that clear the mind's constructive function creating sankharas that form the ultimate realities of abidam right so here the construction metri mega navathenama so this this whole paragraph is what it's saying that forms the ultimate realities of abidam okay now although ultimate realities exist as the concrete essence of things they are so subtle and profound that an ordinary person who lacks training cannot perceive them we know this right we know this the world that we knew before we started meditating and the world that we know now after starting to med- or having meditated or reach a certain level of vipassana jnana is completely and entirely different right after you see vipassana jnana even if you stop meditating right for a long time still you will still be in touch with what you have seen of nature right that will that is forever going to be with you right you can't unsee the truth no right you can't unsee the truth such a person cannot see the ultimate reality because his mind is obscured by concepts now if any one of you is telling me bante i cannot memorize why can't you memorize your mind is obscured by concepts me ayale yana deval me loka sammuthi weda tika okkoma oluwata daagana me paramartha dharmaye me hiti daragunna inna amaru it is very difficult to immerse yourself in vipassana and this deep dhamma and connect at a intimate level intimate level not on a foreign level the basic level no intimate level with this to connect with this give up and immerse yourself in this immerse yourself then these concepts will flow through you right which shape reality into conventionally defined appearances we shape reality into conventionally defined defined appearances right you are annoyed at a person but what is in the depth of that annoyance the hatred rooted chitta you're lusting for something you're wanting something and you really think that this something is going to make you happy if you finally get it what is in the depth of that consciousness and that stream of thought the lobe right the lobe what is fueling all of that the latent tendencies anusya right why is the anusya trying to fuel this what does anusya have in the whole story being bhavatanha bhavatanha right bhavatanha only by the means of wise or thorough attention to things yon sumansikara can one see beyond the concepts and take the ultimate realities as one's object of knowledge now that is very important right that is very important why one the study of abhidhamma takes you into such a depth of prajna that your mind the w- working of your mind accelerates the more that you know about these concepts me hetu pala dharma bedanna puluwang e e e what do you say thikka uh, panya is a pali word increases right this nama roopa as you're going in the vipassana if you are sort of if you see that you are having a slow pace because it is difficult for you to deduce between realities the abhidhamma tells you exactly how to deduce how to catch how to recognize and realize to see that all that independent ultimate reality as it is as it is thus the paramatta is described as that which belongs to the domain of ultimate or supramundane knowledge or supramundane knowledge right supramundane knowledge now give me a moment everyone let me just look for something to share with you
sorry about the weight Pain of the, you can see, right. But then Balana Metana. Now, reality according to Abhidhamma. First of all, classification of reality. Sankata, asankata, we know. Right? Condition, unconditioned, asankata. Sankata, right? Sankata is also prapnyakti. Conventional. Unconditioned is paramatta. Right? Is paramatta. Is that clear? Right? Now, ultimate reality is paramatta dhamma. Consciousness 89, 121. Mental factors 52, matter 28, Nibbana 1. I will upload all of this to the website so you can download it from there. Okay. Wholesome. Hurry. Aggregate of matter. Five aggregates of clinging. Aggregate of matter Rupa Khanda. There are 28 Rupas that fall into Rupa Khanda. Aggregate of feelings, Vedana Khande, is one. Aggregate of perception, Sanya Khande, is one. Aggregate of mental formation, Sankara Khande, is 50. Vedana Khande is a Chetasika, Sanya Khande is a Chetasika. Sankara Khande out of the 52 Chetasikas, we deduct two, hence we have 50. Then another. Again, Aggregate of feelings, Vedana Khanda, is a Vedana Chetasika. So that's one. Aggregate of perception, Sanya Khanda, is the Sanya Chetasika, which is one. Hari, these are two Chetasikas. Otukata, aggregate of mental formation, Sankara Khanda, are all Chetasikas except Vedana Khanda and Sanya Khanda, which is 50. Clear? Clear? Hari. Aggregate of consciousness, Vinyana Khanda, is 89 or 121. 121, we call, we call it in Singhala the Vistara Kramaya, right? Or the detailed technique. The detail here is how you attain Mangapala through Jhana, right? Through Jhana. So forget that for now. We'll go through all of that. 89. Nibbana is one, Nibbana itself. So what do we call the Panchakhande, the five aggregates? It is the 28 Rupas, the Vedana Chetasika, which is the Vedana Khanda, the Sanya Chetasika, which is the Sanya Khanda, the 50 remaining Chetasikas, which is which forms the Sankara Khanda, and the 89 or 121 Chitta, which is known as the Vinyana Khanda. Is that clear? Is that clear, anyone? Any questions? Hari. Now, now, don't worry. We are going to go into greater depth of this. Huh? And so much of beautiful conversations. I'm so excited. <laughs> right. Ultimate types of realities. Right. Now, condition. Now this, let me, ah, you can see the full chart. Nina. Hari. Now, see, this is what we discussed. Sankata, Asankata. Then Asankata is from Balamuku Podihinda. Because it is lesser. Asankata, Podihinda. My gosh. Right? <laughs> Nibbana. <laughs> right? Nibbana. Right? The two kinds of Nibbana. The, the Kilesha Nibbana or the Saupadi says Nibbana and the Anupadi says Nibbana. A can a kilesh nibbane, skanda nibbane. Hurry, a can a kilesing galavicha kine arte, 
kilesi nibbhane kila kina wa i know you don't like the word right <laughs> shiroma i can see your face <laughs> It was a skanda nibbana kila tina. We know that is anupadi says after you pass, after you pass, right? All of that is asankata, and this, this is magapala ne ekhen. Sorry, this is not magapala. This is the object for the magapala chittas to arise. I'm not going to confuse you. right i'm not going to confuse you we are not there yet right but nibbana is not magga pala okay nibbana i'm looking at the faces of everyone you know hare <laughs> <laughs> nibbana is not magga ekena me mane oga ganna महा गिदर राइट यू हैव टू एंटर हाउस यू माइ यू हैव दिस ग्रैंड डो वे राइट एंड द डो वे ऑल्सो हैज दिस एज द फ्रेम एज द फ्रेम ऑफ द डो विच इज ऑल्सो ग्रैंड देखा तो मंग फल वाशे वेन यू गो थ्रू दैट यू हैव बीन बार डू यू गेट इट एवरी वन राइट मग एंड फल just isn't it takes mug and pala takes one object what is that object nibbana as object hence we know mug and pala is not nibbana however when you attain mug and pala we say you have attained to a stage of enlightenment which is correct right but mug and pala mug only arises for two mind moments and it disappears never to arise again ko nibbana utukata right pala arises and then vibrates uh, once and then we go into the bhavanga in the chittaviti we will learn about that right utra ko nibbane do you get it right hence the magga pala takes nibbana as object right now let's go into the big columns sankata right sankata is conventional reality or truth samuti satcha concepts prajnapti nama prajnapti and artha prajnapti nama prajnapti is man woman uh, bandhe uh, you know all of your names all of that is nama a tall person right a tall um yeah a name of a thing phenomena person or be a table a chair right town hall do you get it everyone clock tower all of that nam artha prajnapti artha prajnapti is things like thing person or being now a thing now when you say when you say artha prajnapti a clock a clock right now when you say no not a clock 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 okay now i might have a clock you might have a clock our two clocks might be very different from one another isn't it right however this is the way that we name a thing rupayam when the rupas materiality is formed in this manner it is known as a clock right it is known as a clock however there are table clocks wall clocks clocks that are suitable for the kitchen uh grandfather clocks is that what it is grandfather clocks grandmother clocks of thin one nanny <laughs> so whatever clock it is clock with the mickey mouse you know clock with all these different clock that is a nama prajnapti do you get it right now kha kha artha prajnapti right honda toyota mercedes benz nama prajnapti do you get it right now 
ආර්ථ ප්‍රඥා තිස් මේ විදියට තිබම රෝද when it is like this four wheels two or four doors you can sit in it and you can it is a car that you have friends or your family in or you drive alone right it is known as a car if <laughs> if it is it has uh, if it has um uh, a passenger and a driving seat and also a uh, area to store stuff and carry it then it's known as a truck right if it has a passenger seat and then it has a empty back then i'm getting ahead of myself i don't know the words for all of these things right <laughs> right but you get what i mean right you get what i mean you can have a car so a car artha prajnapti nama prajnapti so again another example me <clears throat> woman woman artha prajnapti nama prajnapti what is the name of that woman do you get it right it can also be woman sri lankan woman do you get it right it's referring to a certain characteristic of that person but here it is what you call a person do you get what i mean right now these things become the object of samatha these things become the object of samatha right varna khasina uh, patavi you know um patavi apote jo bayo khasina right all of these things the corpses the food objects of metta mudita karuna upekka bhavana all of that ekane samadhi everything relating to samadhi has to take a concept as object one concept it can't take samadhi this samatha samadhi cannot arise taking a paramatha as object can someone tell me why can someone tell me why please till i pour myself some water Bhante, is it because we can't feel or see it? Peuna kimu. Let us say you see it. Nikan hitan. Think. Is is it ultimate reality? What is the nature of that ultimate reality? now let us take two examples and the guy no i me and my no we let so us breaking down examples. of the things into smaller parts that's what the vipassana is the, okay. uh, the really ultimate truth is that we are isn't getting it? hotter we are getting closer uh, right eat vada tha podda kya let us go a bit more in samatha you can see chitta and chaita sika you know into ultimate parts bhante is it, it diffuse you can't focus on any part like metta is it, it, you can't focus on one little the smallest part of it it's too general okay put it in a different way because to see the reality of uh, the to, 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 uh, the you need to go deeper so yes. going deeper is deeper and deeper is seeing uh, i mean at the end you want to see there is nothingness but meanwhile we are seeing breaking down and seeing going into the uh, shunyata where there is nothing on that process that's the vipassana you're coming very hot but you're losing it <laughs> you're losing dil came very close dil came very close but okay. is it is it see the things as it is well seeing the things you're coming close but you're not actually just just think about this if you take a patavi kasina right you know what a patavi kasina is a earth kasina and let us take uh let us take me 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 
Tejo Datogam, the Tejo element, fire element. Then Podak Hitana, in your just think with your experience, what is the difference between the Tejo uh, Datu, the fire element, and the Patavi Kasina? What is the difference? When you focus on it, the way that you see, what is the difference in the way that you see it as it is in front of you? Not much of a difference, I believe. Not much of a difference. Tejo and Patavi. Uh, tejo, Tejo, Datu and Patavi Kasina. Right? Two very different things. What do you think? And is it one in static, one in motion? Well, the word emotion is wrong. No, not emotion. Static. Motion. 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 Ah, motion. Correct. Yeah. Correct. One is static. One is yes. in motion. Do you get mm. it? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Patavi Kasina does not change. Otara Samadhi Allaghana Pulo make a Samadhi. Vinaswin Nani Tejo Kasini Gatama Hama Vilema Rupani Vinaswina is Subhavi Upadati Banga Udeavay 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 Koma Samadhi Kalani. Do you do you understand? In the Patavi Kasina, it is static. It is there in front of you. On a villa of Balagni in the Pulua maker. They make a Venus Vene Gatiud. But when you observe, if you are trying to develop Samatha upon a Vidarshana object such as Tejo Datu, it is changing. Me Balna de Nemi Ilanga moment to pay me. What you see now is not what you're seeing later. The mo there's motion here. Is that clear, everyone? Hence, Samatha has to always take now Prakna some sort of Samuti Satcha. And Vidarshana only takes Nama and Rupa as object. Mm -hmm. What is Nama? The 89 or 121 Chittas and the 52 Chetasikas. Right? What is Rupa? The 28 Rupas, which are the four Mahabhutas or the great essentials, the five sense organ. Sense objects, sense organ, prasada rupa, vanna rupa, matakane, patavi apo tejo vayo, vanna rasa, uh, uh, vanna uh, rasa gandha, vanna, oja, oja, and uh, chakku pasada, sota pasada, gana pasada, jiva pasada, kaya pasada. We'll come into that. No need to write anything, right? We'll come to that. You will get charts. Is that clear, everyone? Right? Paramatta Satcha, Samuti Satcha. Nama Praknyapti, Atta Praknyapti becomes objects of Samatha Bhavana. Paramatta Satcha, Nama, Rupa and Nibbana becomes Nama and Rupa becomes objects of Vipassana. Anicca Dukkha Anatta Balani Minami Devalval. Right? Otukuda then. Anicca Dukkha then Kimu Jeevite Yankisi. In your life as you're going through the sort of the highs and the lows of life, right? And you're looking at something to do with Nama Prakhnyapti or Akta Prakhnyapti, which is a Samuti Satcha, a conventional reality. And you're trying to deduce Anicca Dukkha Anatma out of a conventional reality. It will work to a certain extent, meaning it can give profound results as well. However, not as profound as these ones here. Again, at the Vidarshanava Dhyunvinne Samuti Satya Kallagattara Vidarshanava Shen. We know this through experience, right? Is that clear, everyone? Now, moving back, any, any questions? All together, fourfold. In the sutras, the Buddha usually analyzes a being or individual into five types of ultimate reality, which are the five aggregates of aggregates, right? Panchas Khanda. Matter, feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. In the Abhidhamma teaching, the ultimates are grouped into four categories 
categories enumerated in the text. The first three, consciousness, mental factors, and matter comprise all conditioned realities. Sankata. Is that clear? All conditioned reality, Sankata. The five aggregates of the Suttanta teaching fits within these three categories. The aggregate of consciousness, Vinyana Kanda, is here comprised by Chitta. The word Chitta generally being employed to refer to different classes of consciousness distinguished by their concomitants. Now, this is a very important factor. Right? Now, think of something that aroused hate in you. Right? Hate. Dosa. Okay? Think of something that aroused a sense of dosa in you. Now, in that dosa, now, if you take a moment and just think about that experience of dosa, right? Now, of course, we would categorize this as amika uh, dvesha. This is dosa, right? Otogoto meka chitthyadu. Chitted is his chitta. Mm -hmm. Yes, chitta. No, it's a mental factor. It is a mental factor. Who said chitta? I, I, I thought conscious means chitta. I thought conscious means chitta. Well, consciousness is chitta, right? However, consciousness is chitta, right? However, then are when we review that dosa rooted consciousness, what we impinge or what we feel at that moment, the impingement of whatever that brought up that emotion of dosa is a chitta. Everything else is chetasika. So huh? what is the difference Chaitasika and the Chitta? The difference. <laughs> I thought both are the same. No, it is not. That's the thing, right? The word Chitta generally being employed to refer to different classes of consciousness. Distinguished here distinguished by their concomitants. In certain places, you will see chitta being spoken of. Then we, we read it as 89, 121. In certain places, you will see chitta as one. Right? As one. Why? Because all the chittas perform one thing. Perform only one thing. Mukhadde one thing yaka. So, awareness of an object. Awareness of the object. Wonderful. Awareness of the object. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Damayanti. Right? Awareness of the object. I'm looking for something. Ah, here it is. Right? Then metana balamu api. Bante is concomitants there the same as mental factors. We'll come to that for one me one moment. Here, the consciousness aggregate. Then balana metana. Vijanana lakana. Right? Pubhangama rasa. Vijanana Lakkanang is knowing of an object. Now, what does this knowing mean to you? Now, I need as much interaction from all of you, right? As much interaction. Do not leave space for doubt. 
what is the knowing now when we say knowing of an object right what does this mean to you everyone Uh, truth. truth. See the yes. truth. Sorry. Is it nice? Truth. Uh, it is truth. before you going. Uh, just thinking, there is something like color and uh, object, uh, color and shape. Not going into exactly what it is. Uh, the further down. See, I think at the spatial level, that's all that happens. That's what we get. That's how I think. The thing you is, become aware of the uh, object at that time. You're close, you're close, but I cannot uh, give you the green tick. Why? Because you said partial level. And that's why no. I'm analyzing when I'm reading it. Uh, of course, <laughs> I wanted of to ask you that question. Yes. Cognizing the object. But, but, but yeah. when it's knowing of an object, it's awareness of it, intuitive awareness of the object. It's just not just knowledge. Knowing is much deeper. It is more like sati sampadan, right? The knowing of the object. But Dil, when you put it in that manner, right? Yeah. When you put it in that manner, it is, you said it is not just knowing, it's the intuitive knowing. No, no, it's not just knowledge. It's not just knowledge, I said, Bhante, but it's, it's, not. The, it's not knowledge, but it's <laughs> intuitive knowing. Knowing is much deeper. It's sati sampadan, it's not just it's pure knowledge. Okay, but you're saying experiential. Hold on, hold on. Now, Dil, yes. Sati Sam, now everyone has a consciousness. Does everyone have Sati Sampajan? No. No. No, no so knowing is very intuitively, we do know something. Not just so that without you, thinking and comprehending and things, you, okay. know, you, you at once it, it comes like instantaneously you see something, you have to go much deeper to, you're just aware you're that, using, that you're using this word deeper which I cannot understand the context of Dil I cannot understand what context you're using the word deeper with right, just think about it for a moment, how you're going to say, right, Ma Mano did you have something to say? And um, I don't have a book or anything. I'm just just today I was listening to you. I what I learned from uh, uh, the uh, Shiroma her talks, and then uh, the uh, uh, that I came to know it uh, experiential uh, uh, knowledge, experiential awareness. Mangitan itana phodi confusion na kati mano. Uh, may api I know that she, she Roma knows what this is, but I, I have no knowledge at all about Abhidharma. <laughs> just talking, listening to you, and that's Aru. all. Sweet. No, you continue to listen, Mano. Do participate. Right? I Sorry, simply I simply want to know everyone i simply want to know what it means to you when i read knowing of an object you don't have to be right there is no right or wrong what does it mean to you it's what wisdom yeah visaka you have to unmute yourself visaka Um, when you when you um, face a aramuna, uh, so you th you say uh, this is a sound, but not a taste or not a um, not a, not something which you see. But mm. you know what I'm what I'm trying to say is um, differentiating from what you see, what you from pancha indriya, which from which indriya it is coming into you, like. Mm. 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 From the tongue, or whether it is eyes, or whether it is ears, or or the touch. Mm. So this is a touch, not not a not a not what something which you see, like. Mm. So that's how that that's that's what I thought. Api mm -hmm. I'll repeat this in English. Api podda singhar tamarunot hari me singhar tamarunot podda malkhanti kyan balan na. Avisa, I'll come back to you. You're very. Uh, mm, I can't. 
Malkanti can buy? Just directing uh, your mind to an object, just being uh, aware, uh, just being aware of the object means just directing, you don't identify what the, the how object. How the direct karani? The, the mind, the chitta, but not identify, not to level of identifying object, but being just being aware of the object. Sure, 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 sure. Of course, Mahitane, this language, this language is fussing it up a bit for us, right? This language. Now, if you say, if you use the word directing, automatically Atma Sanya Venama. There's automatically Atma Sanya, Saka Sanya, Atma Drushti that comes up. So you can't use the word directing, right? Mm -hmm. The consciousness knowing of an object bear i'm talking about bear raw consciousness right bear raw consciousness all it does when the conditions are present it arises this word knowing this word knowing is only Allana de Akinota Alenama. Alenama. Dakina de Akinota Dak 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 Dakinama. Dakina de Akinota Dakinama. When there is something to be seen, it sees. When there is something to be heard, it hears. But it hears Kilkenny. Me sabdeya, me badina me sabde agrane kraga no vitra. Make a sabde mokad, make a vahane at the make a plane nekad, make a car cut, a kissivak done in hair. Make me badina me vinyane hataga no vitra. Anis siallama vinni. Anis siallama vinni are a chai to sick a dark mood. Does that make sense, everyone? Ek again a podda kitan. Bante, Wait. isn't that the... Can I kindly say something, please? Kau da me. Hiranti. <laughs> Hiranti. <laughs> oh, Hiranti ki anna. Uh, isn't that just awareness? When you... Isn't that awareness? Isn't we... that awareness? Right? Yeah. Now, isn't, the thing isn't... is... The thing is, I don't like to use the word awareness because who's aware? Uh, right? If it is coming from a sheer place of bare awareness when the respective conditions are present, then thumbs up. However, if it is adverting to an object, it is wrong. Do you understand? No. Yeah, what I meant was, yes. sometimes we are aware of things, but not sure the details of it. Yes. So when it is like that, isn't that what you call knowing of the object or vijana lakshana? Metana onno okata hiranti kiyanne kuddakaramana ati kuddakaramana parittaramana ati parittaramana viti kiyala thamai then wa kipu kathavata kiyanne pali. Okay. Right? E kiyanne e kiyanne I am looking at you right now, Hiranti. Right? <laughs> there are others also on my screen. Eunata, I am looking directly at you. Then me koning man dakki hinda dana devika inwa kila konim. Hari, Eunata, I am looking at you. No, I don't know whether what devika's facial movements or expressions what they are. E tara nina sanya paika tina devika etena innawa kiyala otukota you are my atimahanta rammana devika is a weak object at this moment why i'm not looking at devika hence if we say if we say if we go by your what you just said it's right to a certain extent but wrong afterwards mm -hmm. why because chit whether it is where you know with clarity or know very weakly, the chitta simply in its most raw form, it arises just simply knowing what the conditions have presented. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
what the conditions have presented then if you do not have a i however much warner roopers there are around you you will not see correct yeah. right you will not see chitta in its most raw form will know that there is an object to be cognized all the rest will be done with the supporting forces of the mental factors the chetasikas is that clear <laughs> it will become more evident and clear as you but think about it yes shiroma bante etana me describe karnawa balanawa ne me dakinawa ahanawa ne me ahenawa like that so there's no it hasn't gone to the balanawa level महारा <laughs> There is no see. Uh, is there is no um, volitional seeing. Is a mere. There is no looking, but there is a seeing. Right. Like, no, no, noticing, aware of it. I don't know. Mukal deki la it wada ki ani. Being aware of there is somebody there. No. Oh, but I know what Bante is saying. That simply aware. Nas ki wha man thari na ek ta. Chutta fine tune karan na ni. Oh, metna metna me. Bohar samutya no deng. I know now. If I am to say, I know, I know. Let us say someone, right? I know Mustafa who lives down the road. What do I mean? I know the guy, right? I know. right so i don't want you to confuse it with the aspect of really knowing in depth it is not like that right me podi 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 then within a for me let us say i'm looking at someone here to recognize if the person is someone that i recognize there is one chitta vidhi that runs take in the color one chitta vidhi that runs taking the shape one chitta vidhi that runs taking uh, the nama prakshnapti the after prakshnapti and one chitta vidhi bringing all of that data together to now realize who is this person right who is this person now you see it is are knowing kela if we go to the depth of knowing where you know for sure then it's wrong here yam kisi arumna tena me arumna tena kela danna उसे pass occurs because if uh, if it is something to see chakku vinyana chakku prasada and chakka rammana e kene arumna thiyenne hari etokota um etokota chakku pas chakka rammaneyata heetu wenawa heetu hatarak mansikaraya arumuna alokaya saha chakku prasade स्पर्शियनस i consciousness the object of what we see and the retina or the chakku prasad which we call in pali when these three are there pass contact occurs right contact occurs contact occurs and then the process of what we just saw happens 
ඉන චිත්ත වීති this part is also චිත්ත වීති හරි දැන් බලන්න අපි අර knowing කියන කොටසට ගියොත් ඒ කියන්නේ i know the object i know that this is a glass of water i know that this is the phone or the laptop or what not ඒ පැත්තට ගියොත් what we are now recognizing as knowing of an object is something that is in line of after five or seven vithis which is wrong we are talking about raw consciousness me avasthave chitte karanne at this moment the chitta does what it simply knows that which has been presented do you understand how does one how is one thing presented so many causes and conditions what are the so many causes and conditions if it is something to see chakku prasada retina must be there there must be color there must be attention of some sort what if you are in deep sleep and you still have the retina but you can't see anything you are in deep sleep and it's 7 o'clock in the morning the sun is up the light is shining however you are in such deep sleep the shining the sun is shining through your eyelids right however you do not realize it is doing so or it is happening why deep sleep no mansikara no mansikara meaning no seeing do you understand e hetu phala dharma siyallama hetuwen chakku vinyane chakku prasade chakka ramane hata ganna avastha vidhi sparshe kiyana de hata ganna contact occurs right but we must be sure in our minds to realize what is then the raw form of chitta that is what i am trying to get at the raw form of chitta poda kitana ma dena sapyanta hitan bante bante kana ya santi bante for the raw form of chitta isn't this what some monks say called bear attention bante you have just pure bear attention you haven't gone beyond that so like i think it was siroma who said like when you say that bahya says in the see no, there is only the seeing right they are not looking that dictated to the mother 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 that that is just yes. bare attention yes yes so, at that level bante mm. because the thing is the thing is dil what i am trying to get at is not a word right, right? right. i want you to understand, understand. everyone yeah. to get at yeah bare knowing we can say yeah. bare knowing Nice. but if you go beyond it to say there's an interaction between the object and the mind now it is wrong oh. do you want i'm yeah. trying to establish the parameters of raw consciousness in a moment right yes is that clear everyone bante yeah. there is a story in the abhidhamma about that mango uh, miri apita was telling us uh, at the retreat Yes. There was a man sleeping under the tree and the mango fell. Yeah. Ekate ekokate galapanna pulana. Galapanna beh eka galapanna beh mekata mokada ekene chitta viti kaanne mango kathawa. We will come to it at chitta viti. Uh-huh. But menna metana uh, at this time the mango story which I we 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 got me to repeat it uh, at the retreat as well isn't it? May yeah. mango story doesn't apply here because a mango story refers to the bhavanga moment and how we come out of the bhavanga oh i see right? yes. and take the object yeah but then again you take the object just by taking the color first then the smell comes then when the man is waking up he see he senses the uh, smell first then sees the color then the texture and then only goes to see the actual mango absolutely etiko ko manodwarika veeting okkom ekatu karana So the very first that initial topic. initial like it got knowing when that the knowing tamai it is it is eh? simply bear attention as they said bear knowing but knowing i'm careful of that usage because knowing can mean a lot of things yeah yes bear knowing that most bear knowing mm. right bear knowing you don't know anything uh, of the object because of the object but you have taken a certain aspect of the object in <clears throat> do you understand it does that make sense bante uh, yes. are you trying to sort of say bare knowing is what we normally say is sensing um so what i mean by sensing is sort of exactly that where you 
have a very very sort of preliminary sense of something yes yes but i i would not use the word sensing personally because sensing would specifically relate to the the five uh, the uh, the five the, the five sense doors right but this happens beyond the five sense doors just in the mind door with the different other elements as well hence i, I wouldn't use the word sensing but yes gihanta yes what you said is correct right that that bare sensing but the thing is sensing doesn't really communicate the full scope of the chitta mm. right because for example let us say chitta as a javana does more than sensing okay. right it works with the object it 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 creates chitta jarupas it creates karmas it creates you know all of these mm -hmm. things happen right hence we don't usually use the word sensing right now i i hope you're also getting an underlining of of how accurate mm -hmm. or sort of you know to the dot we are trying to come to with the, with the with the definitions with the terminology right sure. is yeah. that clear everyone right but hold on for now can i just go on if you, uh, can i go on up until like 9 o'clock is that fine Yes. If some of you have stuff to do, you can leave. It's fine. I'll go on until nine o'clock, and I'll share the recording. If you have to leave, um, okay. Let's share. Hurry. Now, distinguish by their concomitants. The middle three aggregates are in the Abhidhamma all included within the category of mental factors, chetasikas. Right, Chetasika. They can is san Vedana, Sanya, Sankar. Okkuma, Chetasika. Vedana Kanda, Sanya Kanda, Sankara Kanda. All are Chetasikas. Right? The mental states that arise along with the consciousness performing diverse functions. Right? The mental states that arise along with consciousness performing diverse functions. The Abhidhamma philosophy enumerates 52 mental factors. The aggregate of feeling and perception are each counted as one factor. Right? Understood everyone? Right? One factor is Sanya, Vedana is a Vedana Chetasika, so one factor. Sanya is a Sanya Chetasika, so one factor. Right? The aggregate of mental formation sankara khanda of the sutras is finally subdivided into 50 mental factors 52 minus 2 which is samya and vedana remaining 50 is sankara khanda ternadokumlata right the aggregate of matter is of course identical with the abhidhamma category of matter rupa right which will later be divided into 28 types of material phenomena. To these three types of reality, which are conditioned, is added a fourth reality, which is unconditioned. That is, which is not included in the five aggregates, that is Nibbana. Nibbana. The state of final deliverance from suffering inherent in conditioned existence. Thus, in the Abhidhamma philosophy, there are altogether these four ultimate realities, consciousness, mental factors, matter, and Nibbana. Is that clear? Harineda, Ayu, I really wanted to start this part today. Patanga of the Tikka. I mean, Bante, Bante uh, please excuse me, Bante, is concomitance now what you read? Is yeah. that the same thing as mental factor? Yes. So here, Dil, you have to understand the usage of that word there, yeah. right? Yeah. Here, concomitance they use, distinguished by their concomitance, concomitance. right? Distinguished by their concomitance. It is relating to the Chetasikas. Yeah. But by here, they're using the word. Rather than using the word factors, they're using like the 
that that supporting factor of the chitta by their concomitance yes. in that another, is another, that another, yes. but it is relating it is relating to the chetasikas hari the hari hari the Thank four you, classes of consciousness chatubbida chitta kama vachara rupa <clears throat> Consciousness is fourfold. Sensory consciousness, fine material consciousness, immaterial consciousness, supramundane consciousness. Right? Supramundane consciousness. Now, in the first chapter of Abhidhammata Sangha, no, the first chapter of Abhidhammata Sangha is devoted to an examination of chitta, consciousness or mind, the first of the four ultimate realities. Consciousness is taken up for the study first because the focus of the Buddhist analysis of reality is experience. Is experience. And consciousness is a principal element in experience is the principal element in experience that constitute that which constitutes the knowing or awareness of the object hurry now you understand how you must take that wording right knowing or awareness of the object the pali word chitta is derived from the verbal root cheti to cognize, to know. The commentators divine chitta in three ways, as agent, as an instrument, as an activity. As the agent, chitta is that which cognizes an object. Aramanam chintete chitta. Is that clear? Chitta is that which cognizes an object. As an instrument, chitta is that by means of which the accompanying mental factors cognize the object. Right? As an instrument, chitta is that by which, by means of which the accompanying mental factors Cognize the object. Etena chinteti chitta. As an activity. Chitta is itself nothing other than the process of cognizing the object. Okay, everyone. Is the mere process of cognizing the object. The third definition in terms of sheer activity is regarded as the most adequate of the three. That is, chitta is fundamentally an activity or process of cognizing or knowing an object. Is that clear? That process goes through different chittas. Right? That process goes through different chittas. However, all that a chitta does is with what it has just learned, it works. Process. Do you understand? Right? Now, it is not an agent or instrument processing actual, processing actual being in itself. Apart from the activity of cognizing meaning, then agent. Now, if I am an agent of something, that something is greater than me. Do you do you understand? Right now, let us say let us say a person like a travel agent, a travel agent works for a company, right, or an institute or whatnot. Hence, there is a bigger person behind this travel agent, isn't it? That can't be, no. In the case of chitta, otra atma sanyano. There is then the sense of the illusion of Atma coming here. Hence, agent cannot be it. Instrument. Instrument played by whom? Instrument playing by whose rules? Instrument praying out whose laws? Do you understand? There, are no, there is no such thing. 
right? Then what is consciousness? Consciousness is the mere agent, cognizing the activity of cognizing. That is it. Do you understand? Does that make sense? It will become infinitely more clear as we go on in the chapter, right? Chapter and the next chapters and the next chapters, you will realize, you will realize the depth of that, con the understanding of the consciousness through the chapters will mature so much, right? You will have a certain idea of chitta in the first chapter. You think that you think I know chitta on the second chapter, you will realize what you initially thought of chitta is wrong. Right? Because when you add the component of mental factors, you realize what chitta actually does. Then when we go on to chitta veti, you realize that that second uh, uh, thing that you thought now is correct is also not correct in its absolute terms when you learn the chitta veti processes. Right? Chitta veti process. Then in the last, one before the last chapter, when we do Pajasampada and Patana, you realize what you initially thought in the first, second and the third chapter is completely different from what you think now. Right? The more you realize, they can make Paramartha Dharmyan Katitukarna e Niyaya Dharmyan Terungana Terungana, your knowledge will become more and more polished. But we must let this process continue. Let this process continue. Then Mithana Bhavana Karna Katyat Inneke, right? Oh, go to make a eat at Vada Lesiveno. Right? Eat at Vada Lesiveno. It may Pantiri Nikan Avatane Pahonde. <laughs> right. The definitions in terms of agent and instrument are proposed to refute the wrong view of those who hold that a permanent self or ego is the agent and the instrument of cognition. Is that clear? It cannot be agent or instrument because it goes directly against anatma, anatma. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. It has to arise with the dhammas, with the conditions that are present. It arises, cognizes, it just goes in a flow. It's a mere energy, an activity. The Buddhist thinkers point out by means of these definitions that it is not a self that performs the act of cognition, but chitta or consciousness. It is not a self, but it is chitta or consciousness. That chitta is impure. Why? Anusaya, kilesha, upadane, tanha, avidya. Do you understand? Right? Hence, we see atma in what is inherently anatma. This chitta is nothing other than the act of cognizing and that act is necessarily impermanent, marked by rise and fall, Udayabhaya. Right? Rise and fall. Okay? Rise and fall. To elucidate the nature, now I think that's a lot of information for today everyone. Is that a lot of information for today? Can you take a little bit more information? <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> All right. Now, to elucidate the nature of any ultimate reality, the Pali commentators propose four defining devices by means of which it can be delimited, by means of which it can be delimited. These are, do you understand the term of the, me the meaning of the term delimited? Is that clear? Mm -hmm. By means of which it can be delimited, meaning to differentiate between them. Do you understand? To know where loba stops and moha arises, where moha stops and those arises, where loba is not there and shanta is there. Do you understand? Right? In that manner. These four devices are lakana, characteristic, <clears throat> salient quality of the phenomena, two, function, rasa, its performance of a concrete task, kitcher, or achievement of a goal, sampati, three, 
its manifestation, Pachupatthana, the way it presents itself within experience and for its proximate cause. Right? For its proximate cause. Now, Elanga Satyata homework, memorizing the 12 unwholesome chittas, everyone. Hare. <laughs> Memorizing the 12 unwholesome chittas. Right? <clears throat> the principal condition upon which it depends. In the case of chitta, its characteristic is knowing of an object. Right? Now, let's come to this. Right? Let me show you a different chart. Yeah. What are you seeing at the moment, everyone? Are, are you seeing colored dots? The Cheta yeah. Okay, good. Oh, these are Cheta Sikhas. Okay. Mm, English. Right. Don't worry, I'll share all of this. Right. Chitta. Now you see, we have the Kama Vacharabhumi, Rupa Vacharabhumi, Arupa Vacharabhumi down here, immaterial, and the Lokotra or the Supramundane. Why is it known as Kama Vachar, Rupa Vachar, Arupa Vachar, and Lokotra? Why? These chittas, the 54 chittas that are under the Kama Vachar Bhumi, we have unwholesome 12, rootless 18, beautiful 24, right? Types of consciousnesses. These types of consciousnesses predominantly arise in the Kama Vachar Bhumi. What is the Kama Vachar Bhumi? Kame avachara titi kama vacharo. Kame tula avacharava jivatana hating kama vachar. Boomia. Right? We rather in the sensory plane, all that we do is <clears throat> develop kamas and experience its vipakas along with the salayatanas. Do you understand? The Salayatanas are the six sense bases. Chakku, Sota, Gana, Jibha, Kaya, Manu. Right? Manu. Me. Manu. The sense sphere 54 chittas predominantly arise in the sense sphere plane. Hence, it is known as Kame, Kama Vachara Bhumi chittas. The Rupa Vachara chittas arise Predominantly in the Rupa Vachara plane. Predominantly Kilikan and then Mithana. Those beings living in the human realm, human plane of existence, almost all, 99.9% .9 of humans live to experience the sensual pleasures. Run behind the sensual pleasures, isn't it? Right? In the fine material plane, those beings in those planes, they live with the jhanas. The fine material, the rupa vachara jhanas. In the immaterial plane, those beings live off jhana sukha. They don't have mind, bodies, they only have mind, mano vitarai. Right? The supramundane plane. Now, in the supramundane, there is no plane of existence. Right? But to reach this supramundane state, that is where supramundane, lokotara. Right? You experience magga and pala in the lokotara chittas, not because it, it has a plane of existence. But simply because to gain entry into the supramundane plane, you had to experience one or more of these Mangapala Is that clear? 
මොකද්ද හිතෙන්නේ උදේන්ති ඇයි ඔලුවල්ලගෙන කියන්න උදේන්ති මොකද්ද විතර්ක වෙන්නේ <laughs> no, I was just trying to think how nice it will be to go to that Supramandel place. Then Bellu was like, I'll go to that. I'll go to that place. I'll go to that place. Right? Then Bellu was like, I'll go to that place. I'll go to that place. I'll go to that place. Right? Then I'll go to that place. I'll go to that place. लोकोर्तवेक इन एक विद्यालोभेतना you realize hmm ha ar bawa tanha jump ek right but meka padili do deyanti sorry me udeyanti me keepu kathawak ne me me man eka ninga udahanne ekak api chitta kathawata hari me right me banta banta kenne padili podak inna udeyanti meka padili da yes but it but shouldn't we have an aim as well <laughs> no, oh of course of course you must you must you know evunata dan buduhamduru kiyenawane me nibbhanaya nibbhana is achintaniyai to the mundane individual achintaniyai kiyala kiyanne me etena kiyanne a per a mundane individual however smart will not be able to truly understand that feeling of nibbana up until that person achieves that state they say even a person who goes so close they can kemu me मंगपाल इन ए न्याने एक अन्य में लंग में में संकारुपे का संकारुपे थैंक यू सो मच संकारुपे का संकारुपे का वटा गील ला निवन देख रहा है था संकारुपे का भी नहीं निवन कीन दे संकारुपे का इना मांग पले ए न्यान वाल बड़े पहनने पु गमम गोत्रे विनाशुने गमम that idea of nibbana in comparing they say is a stark difference between what you thought it was and what it actually is e kene ara api ara pana pana ne jeevat wenne pana pana kene arumuna ekin we jump from one object to another one object to another one come want into come 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 but i think it is very important that we don't get too held up on ideologies or what we think it is but put it down to experience may this present moment if you are so focused in getting somewhere what are we in the present <laughs> right so coming back to karma vachara mena me adahasa thenada mundane 81 super mundane 8 or 40 
mundane 81 is further divided into three parts sense sphere rupa vachara arupa vachara rupa vachara arupa vachara three rupa vachara sorry kama vachara sense sphere is further subdivided into three unwholesome rootless beautiful beautiful can a on the karma karaddi on the deval karaddi when you meditate right when you're performing acts of merit when you're helping people mothers taking care of their children right of course i mean in the <laughs> me, me. <clears throat> Yeah, mothers taking care of the children, you have to put it into context. Huh? May it because some can be lower and all of that as well. Right? Hence, beautiful. Rootless kila kiyanne. Rootless kila kiyanne. Ape salayathana badakaran. Avashe e consciousness sticka thamai vay rupa ahetuka ganeti. Under the ahetuka. We will go into that next week. Right? And then unwholesome. Akusal. <laughs> right? Akusal. Unwholesome. Unwholesome you have greed rooted, hatred rooted, and delusional. Right down here. Right? Loba, dvesha, moha. Ahetuka ganeti enama. Akusal vipaka, kusal vipaka, kriya. May Kriya Yakate Tamai, Manodwara Vajra, Panchadwara Vajra, may Ratuweka Tamai, Hasituppa the Chitte Kilakian. Hurry. Beautiful has Kusal, Kusala Chittas, Vipaka Chittas, and Kriya Chittas. The making up it in Ganganda Pulwang, Ape me loke api karna kruti de kathira, Ekatame karma hadaneka. Anitaka my karma vini maker. Oya deku de tamai api me nata nata inni. Ape o coma one nun ticker. Right? Ape o coma one nun ticker api nata nata inni. Me echo karma washing echo kusal kerno, echo kusal kerno. Natangi kusala kusal will be park of individual. Ned. How sad Ned Emakiwama. Up again. <laughs> but that is the reality. That is the reality. Karma hadanama ho karma vininama. Right? Me tick up young, me tick me karma water, me palavini unwholesome tick up a patangamu ilanga sati. Bante, can I ask you, you know, look at this sit. You were talking of the different sit in the different uh, boomies. So in the fine material, the sitta jhana sit, is it? And in the immaterial, it is because there's no uh, body, it's just the jhana sukha. Is that the difference, Bhante? What do you mean? Now you were talking of the different sit that you have, no? So in the unholy view, the akusala sit and the the sobana sit. When we came to fine material and immaterial, did I hear you saying, I'm just checking up, that if you are in fine material boomy, then the sit you will have. Are the fine material sit which uh, the rupa vachra sit and is that jhana sit that you have? And yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, of and course. They, yeah, and so depending on which jhana, the jhana sit of the first, second, third, fourth of it, and the immaterial one would be because there's no body, it's just maybe the jhana sukha feeling because there's only mano. Of course. Right. Thank okay. you, Ben. Does right. supramundane consciousnesses cease at parinibbana? Yes. Yes, Gihanta. It ceases at Parinibhana. Nothing continues. Ekan Memani Gihanta. Then Mangara Kiwi are Panapana Katava. Oya Panapana Jiva Tweneka Ekane Bhavatanhava Natunam. Vibhavatanhava Natunam. E Tanha Okamatuna. When all of those Tanha dissipate and disappear. And we are completely able to be within this present accepting. The reality of nature as it is, the cause and effect functionality of all of this, then we come into a position where there is no other panapana katava nayade. We are not trying to get anywhere. Right? Now we see this very well in our meditation when we are trying to achieve the Midarshanave, 
then up in me we are trying to achieve we are trying to achieve we are so anxious and see and anxious to want to achieve 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 eka tekka then we are not getting why ara mamatwaya wedi mamatwaya wedi menna me yam kisi mattamakata dan me mamatwe nathi karala vartamana mote indime me paramartha dharma chitta chaisika roopa kiyana me kotas dakiddi e experience ka හාත් පසින්ම වෙනස් අර මම ආයනේ කියන එක this me 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 this sonata of me 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 when that disappears and you're looking at it simply in the present then that experience is completely different so so multiply that experience of the present by a million fold right hence now we don't have that wanting to be wanting to be is no more so after parinibbana everything is okay share with them see all them mukada there is nothing connecting to you to another body because that mind is not there what connected you to the position and me to the position that i am as as a human born to whichever mother or as an animal or whatever it is it is that karma that sort of allocated us into these positions so whatever happened to us in this position whether we had a wonderful childhood whether we had a horrible childhood whether we were born impoverished whether we were born rich whether whether we were born in the west or the east or the north or the south pole regardless all of that what vibration you carried is all owing to that energy that you died right so really we've got exactly what we wanted in that last chutti chitta we've got it this is what you wanted or this is the way that your mind was vibrating i'm sorry i know i know <laughs> we all wish we had different <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's the lower chaita sikha you know that's the lower chaita sikha but however much මහා දුක්ඛ කන්දේ කියලා කිව්වේ ඒකයි දැන් අපි දුක්ඛ දුක්ඛ කියලා කියනකොට දුක්ඛ දුක්ඛ කියලා කියනකොට යම් පිච්චන්න ලබදි තම්පි දුක්ඛං යම් පිච්චන්න ලබදි තම්පි දුක්ඛං අ when you don't get what you want where where did that want come from ලෝභ චේතසික හරි ඔතකොට ඒ දුකේට මූලය වෙන්න මොකද්ද ලෝභ චේතසික taking an object लोभ द्वेषीय सा लोभ है, but मेथना लोभ है कि लकी वो मा मेक एक अतरा गैंबरुई लोभ ही सो ग्रोस एंड डिस्गस्टिंग, but but आ कार्मेज़ आ नॉट सो सिंपल, वी आर टॉक मर अनुसे है यर, the Godfather, <laughs> अनुसे है, right is far more insidious because अनुसे है, puppets, कुसल एंड अकुसल right so a person who's trying to now let us say having um let us say a person who has done wrong for a majority of one's life now comes on to take a new leaf in one's life right now he goes into kusal 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 right kusal karla karla karala whilst this kusal is done let us say it is a buddhist thing then the hamdros speak about anatma dukkha anicca all of that even ara kuseta ellila only now that's a tattva what is that riddled by anusayas ete kusale onna kiyana kathawa neme metana adala wenne not being controlled by the kusala is important do you get it now now let us take the fifth precept the pantasile pasveni siksha pade right uh the drinking of alcohol we realize that the 
that the substance is not what breaks the precept. It's not the substance that breaks the precepts. It is the intention of consumption. The intention of consumption breaks the precept. So if a man is to have, you know, let us say, go to a pub or open a bottle, right? Man or woman or person, whatever, we are not sexist here, right? May, <laughs> right? May person opens a bottle thinking, I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to intoxicate myself. I don't want to feel anymore. I want to comatose myself to sleep. Siksha pade kadinama. Right? But of course, if the intention to get be intoxicated is not there, it does not happen. The precept is not broken. Now I remember now when Swami answered during his last days because he was so sick, uh, so sick, he was comatose most of the time during his last years. He was comatose most of the time. Why all the Ayurveda, I mean, I have stirred the Ayurveda pot with so much of alcohol in it, right? Um, and, you know, these concoctions have alcohol and, you know, certain other substances in them. May Ayurveda medicines, you know, so obviously, but does that mean that now in Soyan say seal was broken? No. It comes down to the intention. Right, so that intention driving, that driving force, don't be controlled by these senses. Don't be controlled by these senses. Now, when we talk about, let us say, Vishaka, having so many children, having become a sotapanna, some people just can't believe how this happened. But why not? Do you get what I mean? Right? You are not enslaved by that act. You're not enslaved by that act. Hence, all of these teachings lead us to that position where we are not enslaved. This awareness of mind and the way the mind works and how we cultivate and develop commerce all should guide us to a position where we have a broad awareness over what is happening in this complex. What is happening when you're eating sometimes, we realize as we are eating, Put the, put the fork down or spoon or whatnot or just pause for a moment and realize why am I eating so fast? Now <laughs> you don't want a break. This happens. This happens so much. Right? Because we are we are in front of we are waiting for the people to eat sometimes, to do the banadeshana, right? And we have most often eaten already, so we are waiting for them to eat and finish sometimes. And you realize. People just lose their senses. Right? What happens? You're enslaved by what this time? The Russia. The important thing is not to get enslaved. Knowing that demarcation, having that self-awareness to demarcate between those two. We will leave it at that, everyone. I'm so excited for next week. I hope Thursday comes faster. <laughs> <laughs> right, everyone. I will. So, put up, put up. <laughs> Homework. Okay. Read the, read the pages. Think about the chittas. Memorize the 12 unwholesome chittas. Okay. We, you have read up until 32, if I remember correctly. Page number yeah. 32. Correct. Right, you've read up until page number 32. So, um, we have not gone up until page number 32 today, right? We've only gone up to 28, but read up until Akusala Chittani, the end of Akusala. Sorry, the end of Akusala is on page number uh, 30, right, 39, right? 40, page number 40. 
read up until the beginning of page number 40, which is the end of Apostle Chittas, right? 32 to 40, the first paragraph on top, right? Is that okay, everyone? If you have questions, of course, I know that some of you are meeting on Wednesday. If you have questions and they are not answered, right? Please do not think that you are disrespecting me or that you are putting me on the spot. Ask the question, right? I have taught you oh, yeah. so many times. You're not going to sort of do anything of the sort. Ask the question, right? All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a pleasant rest of the night and get working on the Abhidhamma from tomorrow, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.